Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Data Movers, where we sit down with the most influential men and women of today. I am your host, Jamie Scott Okataya, founder and CEO of JSA, along with my fabulous co-host, top B2B social influencer and friend, Mr. Evan Christel. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Data Movers, where we sit down with the most influential men and women of today's leading uh, data center and telco innovation supporting the uh, amazing network infrastructure requirements of this modern world. Uh, Jamie, uh, we were just chatting a moment ago about your little one. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, a, you're a mother and you, you have a lovely family. I'm, I'm curious, how do you keep everyone safe and healthy at home, particularly with, with a toddler? Like what's your advice to new mothers and really everyone? Uh, it takes, for, you know, making a safe household. Yeah, it, it takes a village. Um, uh, <laughs> as you know, I'm Italian American, and so thankfully, we were, I was born into a village <laughs> that appreciates <laughs> that it takes a village. So my mother, my mother-in-law, thankfully, always there with wisdom. But I will tell you, we just recently moved because uh, the oh, wow. house, the house that we lived in, um, really, I, I broke out in head-to-toe hives. Um, and oh my goodness! Yeah, I, I honestly, I, we, you know, we didn't get it properly tested. Uh, I had to break through walls, etc. So I was like, mm, maybe easier to just move. Uh, but uh, I think it had mold. So um, oh, you know, so you have to listen to your body. You have to listen to your uh, your parental uh, intuition. And, you know, and, and think about your little ones, like they're crawling on the rugs and floors, like, you know, they're, oh, they're right. in it, they're in it, you know? So um, if your body's being sensitive to it, for sure, that, that little, that little toddler is, is even more uh, sensitive to it. So um, I didn't take any precautions. Yeah, I just put on to Zillow so, and got so out many, of there. <laughs> so many dangers. I mean, uh, we moved last summer. And, you know, there's radon, it's, a, it's like a visible gas you have to be worried about, mold, asbestos. Um, there's all kinds of toxins and crazy stuff to be aware of, particularly with like youngsters. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a minefield. Luckily, there's a lot of tech that can help with that. We have like uh, IoT sensors that, that can detect any uh, leaks or floods. Um, we have air quality uh, sensors you know, that can detect, you know, anything from gas leaks to like CO2 leaks to, um, I'm probably scaring everyone right now. No, who's no, watching but, us, but. It's, it's something to talk about, you know, especially in the fall, like we, we're more indoors and we need to make sure that we're, we're providing healthy environments. And by the way, air quality, as our next guest will illustrate, can actually mean uh, overall uh, performance uh, enhancements. It can give you a leading, cutting, competitive edge. Uh, so with that, I am going here on Data Movers, bring in our guests, where we dive into their background stories, a little bit of their careers, highs and lows, and unique perspectives on the future of our industry. And I'm so, so thrilled to welcome Mr. Jason DeFuscio. He's the CMO and product leader at k and Global Filtration. Jason, welcome, welcome, my friend. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate being here. Yeah, appreciate having you and welcome, Jason. So I, I was just learning a little bit about KNN on this episode. You, you guys go way back, right, to like the 50s, which, um, you know, some of us weren't even around then. But, um, you know, advancements in filtration technology in the automotive industry have been your forte. Everyone who is a car person will kind of know of your brand. But, but talk a little bit about um, the pain points you solve and how they're relevant in our industry, the data center industry. Absolutely. Something you don't talk a lot about, you know, it's more speeds and feeds and power and other things, but uh, evidently air quality is a big deal. Well, you know, air quality, your air handler, all, all of that mm-hmm. topic tends to be the, the type of thing you don't think about until it becomes a problem. Right, Jamie, if that's if that's really what caused you to move, then 
Uh, you probably don't spend much time thinking about it until there's a reason to be to be thinking about it. That's right. um, and that's really where KNN takes its story and and turns it into this data center topic. But Evan, like you say, we go back a long, long ways. Uh, if you go all the way back more than 50 years, we've been in the filtration game since the very beginning. K and N is actually, are actually the initials of our founders, Ken and Norm, who a long time ago were looking, they were motorcycle enthusiasts, they were racers, they raced on dust tracks and dirt tracks off-road and everything else. They just wanted their motorcycle to go faster, their air-cooled motorcycle go faster. And they were looking around for ways they could coax a bit more horsepower out of that air-cooled engine. And they arrived at the air filter. And they thought it or they found a media that would both capably filter out the dust because an engine's got to run and breathe and, and run clean, but allowed more airflow and airflow equals um, horsepower. And so that's what they did from way, way, way back when is produce a, an air filter that was capable at filtering out the dust while letting more of the good stuff, that good clean air in. And uh, they were very successful as racers. And then they developed a business around it. Uh, they then uh, developed a, a filter that could be reused and washed rather than thrown away. Especially, and that was a, another big boon inside that off-road, dusty, dirt tracky environment. That happened a long, long time ago, and ever since then, the business that they formed, KNN, has now been uh, um, in various ways and for various applications in and around the performance automotive market. And cars and trucks and SUVs, muscle cars, hyper trucks, power sports, motorsports, been helping out with that exact issue, um, allowing people to help their engines breathe better with this sort of threefold formula. Filter the dust, allow the air to pass through and be washable and reusable. And that, that's really Canon's story up until about three or four years ago. About that time, one of the major hyperscalers in our industry here, data centers, they had a need that was much the same, sounded much the same. They wanted to filter the dust. They wanted better airflow and they wanted something that was washable and reusable. And they actually found their way to KNN if the true story was being told. Uh, and, and with their help to their spec, we built what we now have as a line of industrial and data center air filters. Because the same formula turns out, it works great in an engine and it works really, really well in a data center. And so that's what we sell. We have a, a washable, reusable series of panel and V-bank filters for data centers and other industries. And it, it provides those same three benefits. Just it's simple because again, nobody thinks about their air filter. So we keep it real, real simple. More air, less dust. It's washable and it's reusable. And there's lots of ways that that formula goes together to benefit a business, most especially a data center. I just love that. I love that story. And oh, I should tell you guys, if you are watching, not just listening, uh, over my shoulder, there is a QR code. Go ahead and scan it and you will get right to the KN site that we're talking about. And on there, there are so many amazing black and white photos of the founders racing their motorcycles all the way up to... Uh, the present day, uh, how you guys are, uh, you you are so known in the automotive world, the race tracks, every race track has k &N all, all over it. Um, you are the um, competitive edge to to that industry. But to, uh, you know, whatever data center it was that found you, we are sending them uh, love and, and, uh, um, and, and kudos, thanks, because uh, every every data center needs you guys, especially as we are on this quest to get way more sustainable in our data center digital infrastructure industry. So tell us a little bit more there. How do your ear filtration solutions really help us get greener? Yeah, sustainability, sustainability obviously a major topic for any business and particularly amongst data centers. You, we would say there's two major ways we contribute to the sustainability or an ESG movement inside a company. First and the largest would simply be the waste stream that, that a data center contributes to. You know, if we think about the waste stream out of a data center, just even in pounds, uh, their air filters are going to play a very big percentage of the waste stream that makes it to a landfill. Uh, a V-Bank air filter, maybe three feet by three feet by one foot deep. These are big cubes that have nowhere to go but the landfill. Some may be recycled, but most of them end up in a landfill and they don't go there by the 
singles or the doubles or the, even the dozens, they go there by the many thousands. And so when you have a washable and reusable air filter, that waste stream pretty much comes to an end. Nothing's thrown away for 15 years. Nothing is thrown away. Um, that major hyperscaler that I alluded to at the beginning, they have successfully been using more than 30,000 of our air filters for over three years. And so that's about 90,000 air filters that have not been thrown into a landfill. So your waste mm -hmm. stream audit, that, that's the first and best place to start. That's the most obvious place when you're not throwing something away and you're simply washing it and reusing it. Uh, there's a lot of landfill waste that's, that's set aside. That's number one. Number two would be simply the power consumption that's that's used along the way. So again, three years uh, in use at this hyperscaler, we haven't thrown anything into a landfill, number one. And each and every day that those filters have been in use, they're more efficient. So less power being consumed is good for the environment. It allows the data center to use that uh, power, obviously, where they, they would want it to in a less wasteful way and more towards the, the actual um, uh, you know, the service of the center itself. And uh, that contributes two ways, uh, less power being consumed for the same amount of air being delivered can use less power, number one. And then number two, it's what less wear and tear on the air handler itself. You'll simply get more life out of the air handle that you have. We've seen this come through in spades for uh, people in their homes. We sell these filters to residences as well. Uh, and so you get more life out of the equipment that you have. And so it's another big, big way we contribute to the sustainability or ESG movement inside of a data center or other, other company. Just love that. I love that. Fantastic. So sustainability, efficiency, you know, a lot of benefits over single use disposable filters. Uh, what about customization? You know, every data center seems to want something different or unique. Do you do that as well? Absolutely. You know, the, the, the magic is really in the filter media and the way that that's constructed mm -hmm. and the way that, that the specs of a particular air handler or data center would want to see that come through, whether they're looking for a free flowing MERV 8 or they've got a, a higher standard MERV 13, MERV 14 and really need to filter out the, the smallest of the particles. We can handle all those various types of applications and requirements. And then, of course, every different air handler has a little bit different size and everything else. But changing the dimension, changing the depth, changing the, the clip-in, drop-in nature of them, that's really, really simple. The hardest part is getting that, that media to be free-flowing and yet be capable at, at filtering out the dirt that, that um, they need, they require. So everything else after that, the customization or tailoring, piece of cake. I just love this. I mean, you're such a storyteller in general. You really put it in layman's terms, but you know, for us non-techies, I, I get it. I get why this is good for our industry. I get why this is good for our environment. And now it's really a matter of shedding light on this story and educating. Now you and your team are definitely taken to the road. It's a very business conference season, as we all know, crazy, crazy fall time. Um, you guys are attending events around the world. Uh, just to spread spread the word, um, can you tell us where you may be heading next and Absolutely. some trends that, that you're hearing? Absolutely. So we are sort of rookies yet in this data center space. You know, we've been doing this a long, long time in the automotive world, but we're still getting our feet underneath us on the uh, data center side. And so we enjoy going to these data center shows. Been to a couple this fall here in North America and looking to go around the, literally around the globe here in the next coming, uh, coming months. We'll be in Singapore, we'll be in London, um, we'll be in lots of other places, including China and, uh, and other spots around the globe. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been very interesting. I'm, I'm also very new to the business. I've only been with KNN for a few months. Um, and so I'm learning by leaps and bounds and, and getting to see the shows, meet the people, hear the topics of the day and how this particular topic may be a, a benefit has been a, a wonderful learning experience for me in a very, very short period of time. Um, you mentioned what topics are we hearing about? I mean, this will come as no surprise. Sustainability, a major, major topic. Power consumption and carbon offsets, also a, a gigantic topic. And so, as I just described, I think our filters have a lot to play in the current world at the current moment. Um, I know there's a lot of work being 
being done around the future of cooling for data centers, immersion, and lots of other really transformational technologies that are out ahead of us. And I, I'd say I'm excited for those as well, but to all the data center operators that, are, that, that have existing equipment now, as they wait for that technology to both you know, become available and then become uh, frankly usable in their, in, their, in their current infrastructure, we have a solution that can help you tomorrow and every day between tomorrow and when you know, these new transformational technologies can come through. So I think there's a lot of very interesting ways for us to take our story to the data center community. And uh, I'm looking forward to meeting more and uh, getting to know the data center community even more, make our, make our story even easier to understand and, and quicker to pick up. Because I think there is a lot, a lot of ways that, that our, our product benefits the data centers of now in addition to the data centers of, of the future. Unbelievable. And and again, if you guys want to scan there and go right to the filtration site, uh, you'll see that on the road there in 7x24 Exchange Fall Conference, DCD Connect in London, like you mentioned, Data Center World Asia, Capacity Europe, DCD Virginia, China Cloud Convention, Data Center World Ireland. Again, wherever you, you are, they are there, I'm sure. So go ahead and scan, guys, and, and make sure you set up meetings if you are in the same location. Sorry. Evan, over to you. <laughs> wow, Jane, that's a lot of places. You need more places, Jamie. I don't think you have enough going on. <laughs> but so suppose a data center operator is interested in k and products. I mean, how do they procure them? What's the process work in terms of setting it up? installation, all, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, the, the, uh, the obstacles, we're, we're looking to keep the obstacles as small as we possibly can. So the first step, I would say, uh, the easiest way to reach us is by, by way of that QR code and, and to sign up for a pilot. You know, we, we offer a lot of big claims and I understand that it's easy to make claims like 40% more air efficiency in three to 15 years without landfill waste and everything else. We'd really like to just show that it's 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 real. And we do that by way of a pilot. So we offer a free pilot in most circumstances to try our products out in the data center, particularly those data centers that have rooms dedicated for testing um, products like this. Um, we'll engineer the, the right size and spec to their requirements and allow them to just drop them right in and, and see a pre and post test. That's the pilot stage. And we'd encourage anyone to uh, sign on for one of those. The way somebody who does that, just go again to that canglobalfiltration.com website. You'll see lots of places where you can sign on to have someone contact you and we'll get a pilot ready to go. But that, that's really the, big, the biggest thing. I would encourage anyone who's interested in this to see it for themselves it's not, it's not transformational. It really just works. It's a better mousetrap. And we'd love to really show it and how it can work in, in their own data facility, in their own environment, because everyone is unique. See what the, that pre and post, what that benefit can really look like in their own data center. Yeah. And you know what? It also speaks to the type of people over at KNN, because from what I found in you being exemplary here, it's, you know, you put your... Uh, you have such faith and trust in your product. You put your, you put your words where, you know, you walk the walk and, um, and it's, uh, we like to see that here in our industry. So thank you. All right. Well, so thank you for saying that it, it's easy to do. We've got 50 years of proving it in, uh, in the toughest automotive applications out there. And so it's really easy for me or anyone at, at KNN to put our money where our mouth is, as you say, um, because it's been working for, for 50 years. It's not new. It's just and, new to this to this application. And I wouldn't want to uh, make enemies over at the race car tracks. Like I feel like they're a pretty tough folks. So <laughs> you have to <laughs> you have to be strong and tough and have good products with them. There, there's no no jokes around. All right. We know so, you're a huge NASCAR fan, Jamie. We, we oh, know you're always there. <laughs> well, you know, I'm in that pit changing those tires out. Like. <laughs> All right. So uh, Jay, um, Jason, let's go ahead and talk about uh, your your career a little bit. We always do on uh, Data Movers and we're excited uh, to really talk about your own career path, what inspires you, what, how did you even get to your role over at KNN? It's such a great one. Absolutely. I, I love KNN, um, though I'm new. I'm a, I'm a lifelong marketer. 
I'm a lifelong marketer, been in, in the marketing field for 20, I guess, 23 years now. And it's because I enjoy people. I enjoy what makes them tick. I enjoy the problems that they have and how we can best solve them. So that's why I love marketing. And um, I, I've been doing marketing work in the automotive and power sports fields for pretty much that entire time, all 20, 20, 23 years or so. The majority of that with Polaris Industries. Uh, oh. You may know Polaris Industries from snowmobiles or side-by-side off-road vehicles or motorcycles like Indian and others. A wonderful career and a wonderful, wonderful um, company at Polaris. And then most recently, the last three months or so at k and um, As you described at the beginning, everybody knows k and it's a, it's a wonderful heritage and a brand that people love and a brand that people know. And so it was a no-brainer to come to work at, at K&N and, and pick up not just the legacy of automotive performance, but now to take and diversify a company and take what I love doing, which is meeting people and solving problems into a new vertical, a new industry for this company. And really for this company anyway, help chart the, the future of, of, a, of a new business unit. So that's my career in a nutshell. So well said. Love it. Awesome. So Polaris was was is really known for innovation, doing things differently. So many products and segments, really cool company. Uh-huh. You're only there three months, so you know at K and N. So, what do you hope to do differently or innovatively at K and N, uh, given your tenure? And how do you how do you encourage innovation within your team? There's so uh, there's so many good people at Canon that have been doing this for a long time. It's really the people around Canon embody that uh, labor of love, you know, situation that's out there. They they love the brand, they love the products, they love the customer, they love the applications of it. So uh, fostering innovation is really really easy. Uh, for me, I've been able to come in and not coming from outside of the brand anyway. I, I just like to get to root cause. And ask ourselves and, and ask the teams to think about who really is the customer, what really is their problem. And if we can get our problem statement down, then we can la- ask a lot of fun questions like what if and so what? What if we were able to solve the, the problem a different way? And, and so what? What would it mean for people if we did it that way? And it, just by asking those three questions, what's the root cause? What if we thought about it differently? And so what? Would they understand it? Uh, the, the ideas are inside the, the people of k for sure, because they love it and they've been around it for so, so long. It's just a matter of unlocking it and then pushing it forward. I love that. And clearly that's what you did uh, to get yourselves uh, um, as leaders in the, in the data center industry too. You know, big data center came knocking and you were like, you know what? This, this will apply and we will make you better because of it. And boom, you, mm. you developed it and now we're bringing it. I mean, the whole thing is just amazing. So sorry. Um, okay. We are now at our rapid fire fun facts section of our podcast, which we're really excited about. That's basically, we're going to throw wacky, crazy questions at you that have no topic at all. <laughs> no, no theme going on, just wacky, silly questions. You just say the first thing that comes to mind. Evan, right. you want to, you want to kick it off, Ed? Yeah, so Minnesotans love their sports teams. Uh, Jay, who's your favorite sports team? Yeah, I bucked the Minnesota trend. I am a lifelong Green Bay Packer fan. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Good answer to that one. <laughs> I feel like the whole state would revolt. <laughs> All right, and uh, your number one piece of career advice. Hmm. Career advice. Well, they say it's not uh, what you do, but who you work for. And so my career advice is to be someone that people enjoy working for. I love that. Mm. Nice. So Midwest nice, isn't it? Uh, it's really, unlike <laughs> New York and Boston. I'm like East Coasters. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got a bad um, rap. We're nice. We're nice. No, I'm not. No, we're not. Um, <laughs> but thank you. Anyway, um, favorite hobby. I'm guessing maybe something to do with four by four or off-roading, but um, that's just a hobby. Off-roading is right up there. I, I love okay. photography. Uh, I love sports, golf, lots of different hobbies. Nice. My, my husband does have an Indian motorcycle, just saying, when, as we Ooh. make a, Do you let him ride it anymore with a, with a new, the new father? 
<laughs> not some severe no. uh, um but uh, very safe though beautiful beautiful bikes and innovative it, going it, back it to is, polaris yeah. and anyway uh okay uh favorite place to travel jason all oh, easy italy it, ah. it starts and ends in italy i could spend my the rest of my days traveling around italy every now and then we're like why don't we just move to italy life is better in italy I think there are a lot of data centers that need new uh, re redesign. With I look forward to visiting products. every single one. Yes. <laughs> Line them up. <laughs> yes, I, I will deliver personally over there. Yes, mm -hmm. we'll do a tour. <laughs> and uh, music preferences, genres. Uh, what say you? You know, I, I listen less to music and more to podcasts these days. It's funny. Mm. Good answer too. Yeah. Well, I heard there's a good podcast called Data Movers. It's really <laughs> up there in the rankings. All right, last last question, and really because we're both Italian American, I'm going to ask favorite food. Lasagna. Oh uh, well, I mean anything in the Italian genre here. We we could go on for days and days. Pastas, pizzas, yes, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have, we All right, have road trip. Common North loves. End. Common loves. <laughs> North End right. down in down in I Providence. Mean, and, We're gonna and gelato, Jamie. Am I right? Gelato. You have not had <laughs> an experience until you have a chocolate gelato in Rome. Like, have a little taste yeah. of that. It is life altering, it especially. Is. I don't know, especially as it a is. woman after a baby. <laughs> Well, what's what's this little taste business? No, uh, uh, three scoops. That's it. Some no. lemons, right? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jason. It's great to see that there's so much innovation happening in our industry, in the data center industry, and it's, you know, the whole supply chain. People are rethinking their design top to bottom, and, you know, you're at the heart of that. So congratulations on uh, your success. Awesome. Yes, thank you so much. Appreciate the time and thanks for having me. Uh, we uh, we so enjoyed every second of this. Thank you. And if you enjoyed viewers and listeners uh, to today's Data Movers podcast as much as we have, please go ahead and check us out, jsa.net slash podcast for more upcoming episodes. And be sure to follow us on X. That sounds vaguely pornographic, but that is what it is. <laughs> Used to be Twitter. Jay Scotto. <laughs> used, to, uh, used to be Twitter. Okay. Uh, Twitter on uh, Evan Kirstel and Jay Scotto. Yeah, absolutely. Check us out there. And as always, happy networking.